Hey everyone, thanks for joining me tonight. Uh, what you're looking at here is Sirius, or Cirrus, I think I said that wrong, Cirrus. <laughs> anyway, um, I finished my, my all my setup and my uh, star lining and I just finished with my focusing. So as you can see, I have a pretty good looking diffraction spikes. Pretty good looking diffraction spikes here. Uh, so anyway, let me take you back to my main screen. So I'm all ready to go. Um, let me share with you my main target tonight. And that is uh, the Flame Nebula or NGC 2024. This is DSO browser. And I'll be lucky to get hopefully some of that because I got a, a waxing first quarter moon tonight. But anyway, it says my camera should capture that. We'll see. Uh, but anyway, the main purpose of tonight's session is uh, PhD 2 troubleshooting uh, round 2 with Jerry Hubble. And I'm about to get him on the phone. And then he'll uh, team view in and uh, help me out with the guiding. Hopefully the powered hub is going to solve the problem. So. Hey, Tony. Hey, Jerry. How you doing? Good. So, I mean, I'm to the point now where I'm framed up, as you can see, and I'm just ready to kick in the guiding to see what happens. Okay, you know? let's, uh, we need to run that camera to see if it takes frames like it should. Okay. You want to... Based, based on what they had found, I, I suspect there's something with your computer, but we'll see. Okay. Um... Got the powered hub going. So that's the right camera, right? Right. That's, GWO. That's it. And you're using uh, the, the, the using the cable. Right, the telephone like type cable. What do yeah. you call? I'm not sure S what you call it. It's an ST4. It's an auto guide or ST4 cable. ST4. Yeah, that's all hooked that's up. A So far, so good. Um, are you running? You're not running uh, the ASCOM driver or anything, are you, for the mount? No. Just did It'd my... be nice if you had that because then you'd be able to record the mount uh, information. Yeah. I mean, I I want to, but I've been having nothing. Like I told you before, I just run into roadblock after roadblock when I try to get it going. It looks like, uh, well, it looks like it's looping. I don't know, uh, let's select a star here. Oh, there you go. Look at that. One second. Boom, it's moving. It's look like it's doing its thing. Nice. So now, let's try something. Let's, let's speed it up a little bit to mm. see what happens here. Okay. Yeah, it's it's moving. That's that's what we want to see. Before so, that wasn't happening. Remember when we connected to the camera, it wasn't working at all. Yeah, it was spitting and sputtering big time. It was just stop. So the communications is good now. So let's stop this. Okay. So now what we want to do is uh, force the calibration. Okay. Can you explain what uh, that is again, Jerry? I know you told me once, but. So the calibration, basically, what the what the PhD guiding does is it just moves the uh, pulses the the uh, mount yeah. a certain number of times, and it moves the uh, and it measures the the motion of the star to see how far it moves based on a given number of pulses, okay. and from that it can calculate how far it needs to move in each axis to correct um, to correct it uh, back to the center. Okay. So that's all the calibration does, and the force basically forces it overwrites the existing. If there's an existing calibration, when you force it, when you hit the control, um, shift click to force the calibration. I'm going to shift it, and then it should. Uh, yes. So it should sit there and pulse it like it's doing now. You see down there in the bottom. Um, 
left where it says West Step 7 distance moved. Yeah. It's doing exactly like it should. It's moving a specific amount every pulse. You see it on the star. See that? Even though the star is moving away from the center of the diureticals, it that's okay. That's, yep. Okay. Yep. That's what it's that's when it's measuring. It's taking a position measurement every time it pulses the camera. Okay. And now it's gonna go to, now it's gonna clear the backlash. Now it's gonna go north south. It looks like you got your camera rotated ninety degrees. It doesn't matter. I mean is that is there a better i mean no it doesn't matter because it's going to correct it's going to it's measuring it and correcting it the, the way it needs to okay oh just to let you know i also updated the drivers for the camera as well well that's probably i may have corrected the issue then i mean and then i rebooted before uh -huh. i started you know before i did went into the session right and you know just to rule out you know the fact you know that it could be that i mean just you know trying to think of everything i could think of well it looks like it corrected it corrected the problem do you think that having that powered hub um helps as well well that helps yeah that'll always help yep i don't know why it's taking so long to clear the backlash is that something associated with the now, I guess it went away from that. Am I right when I say that? In terms What's of, that? In terms of clearing the backlash, because I don't see it anymore. Well, the mount, what the backlash is, the mount isn't moving when it's pulsing it, so there's some play in the gears. That's what the backlash is. Okay. So we'll see what, we'll, we'll let this finish and see what the calibration looks like um, when it's done. And, yeah. uh, we'll, evaluated at that point but it, as far as the camera is concerned it looks like it's working fine now okay it's it's getting those frames going so yeah it's taking those frames is it normal what it's doing right now though jerry yeah this mm. is part of the calibration uh it's normal it's ah. it's off now now it's finished okay there we go. now it's going to guide now let me go look at the uh Is it normal for the graph to look like that in the... Now see the, here, this is the this is the calibration. Okay. Ah, that's what the star was... That's where it was going. When yeah, it was, so what this is, that shows you the movement of the star, and it's calculating the amount of motion per step. Okay. And that's what these value... That's what this... This is RA rate. Um, and the deck rate. And they're a little bit... It's kind of odd that they're a little bit different, but that's no big deal. Um, the uh, so for the most part, this calibration looks good. Uh, the uh, deck RA is blue. It looks like your camera's turned ninety degrees. Because RA should be horizontal and the red should be, which is blue, and the red is deck should be vertical. So it's like you're rotated 90 degrees, but that doesn't matter. I wasn't it knows even. Which, yeah. It knows which way. It knows which way to go for each correction. Okay. So uh, let me close that. So what we're looking at here, I don't know why it's it's really cycling pretty hard. When you say cycling, pretty, what do you mean? So if you look at the, uh, well, that's not true. Either. Let me do a trend line here and turn on the correction so I can see which way it's correcting. So how good a polar alignment did you do? With the pole master. It was deadly, I mean, right on the money. Okay. So the RMS error is pretty good. I mean, it's this first number. See where I'm, the cursor is. Right. Point point two five and point one nine. Those are pixels. And the scale is such that that's typically what you'll get. That that's pretty good. That's the fraction of a pixel that it's measuring to. Uh -huh. Um. So that's about what you would expect. But because your image scale is so large. 
it's about three arc seconds or almost four arc seconds per pixel. What, what, do, you, what do you mean by you're that? Gonna have, you're going to have large changes. Basically, that's why you have a one arc second RA, RMS periodic error or uh, correction. Mm -hmm. If you had a if you had a larger scope, that that little finder scope that you have with your finder with your auto guider is not a very long uh, focal length. Oh. Doesn't look like. Okay. Do you think it would be better uh, to get a, a guy scope with well, a longer focal typically length? Typically, you get a little more. Let me. I don't know what you have it configured as. Let's see if I can figure this. Oh, I know where I need to go. It's here. I'm gonna stop it. Okay. it looks like it's working. So, if you look at, which version of, this is PhD2, alright, so, you've got your focal length set at 210, is that, that's correct, right? Right, that's correct. Alright, let me look at this. That's correct, too. I just get a, sort of a, I plugged it in and it detected the the um, right. the various you know specs of the camera. No, this is this is fine. Um, but there are I'm some. If... I'm just you know I watch some of these videos where these guys have a total RMS error of like 0 0.01 or two or three or eight. You know it's just well, some ridiculous it's, it's, low number. I well, mean how do they do it's that? It's actually less than that. Actually, it's not not that good. It's it's zero point typically. Well, this these are low end mounts anyway, so typically you're going to get from at the best a half arc second and to around an arc second. Now, for example, the XS2 mount that we have that we sell, which is equivalent to your AVX, uh -huh. I think that's what you have, right? Right. Um, we get um, around a half arc second. But there's some things also that are involved there. One is like I told you about the resolution of the of the pixel. You've got a pretty high. Um, I got a view, and I'll show you on the. Um, so your this is their scale, 3.68 arc seconds per pixel. Okay. That's pretty big. Um, that's a pretty large scale as far as being able to measure the motion. So what that says is that um, you're measuring to a fraction of a pixel, but uh, half a pixel is still two arc seconds. So you could be off two arc seconds before it adjusts it, and that's what you're seeing. So if you look at this chart, um, The center is zero, and each line is one arc second. So look how much it's moving. The mount is moving. It's right. moving three arc seconds. See that? Two arc seconds, and then plus plus one, minus two. So it's moving peak to peak. It's moving two to three arc seconds. All right? Mm -hmm. So now one one thing you can do, though, is, is to change the uh, aggression. Um, let, me, let, me, let me turn this down a little bit. What is that? What does that mean, Jerry? That means a gain on how much it moves to correct for an offset. Uh -huh. So when it detects that you're off by half a pixel, uh -huh. that that that's how forceful it is moving back. And what that'll do, if you got too, if you're too forceful, it'll sit there and oscillate like that. It'll overshoot basically. So you're pulsing it really hard, to, and you overshoot. And then when it detects it the next second, it says, "Oh, you're too far this way." So you're going back and forth, back and forth. The other thing we can do is change the time. So I back the aggression off. You see how the the deck doesn't move because it's not really it's not tracking. It's just steady. Yeah. But the RA is that. So let's um, let me see here. Let's do that. I'm gonna acquire the signal again, and uh, I'm gonna change this to one second. Uh, and then we're going to start. And we'll see what the chart looks like there. Okay. See if it settles down a little bit. So is it, so as time goes on, the graph... See how it settled down? Yeah. So what I did, I just tuned it. 
but okay. by adjusting Before that. It was over, by um, adjusting the aggression. Okay. Right. It was overshooting. Now it's the same. Now see, it started to drift down, and now it's come back. Yeah. Um. We'll have to wait and see. I'm surprised it's swinging that much. Is 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 your mount? Um, is there a lot of lash in it? Um, as far as when you when you so if you take the if you take your hand and put it on the uh, telescope and try to move it in the R axis, does it shift a little bit or is it tight? No, it doesn't move at all. Once everything's locked it doesn't down, doesn't move at all. Yeah. So there's no gear swap or anything. You can't feel it moving trying to. No. This is better. So so if you look here okay. on the RA. Yeah. Well, it's still measured about the same. See. I'm surprised it's that high. That didn't seem to do it a whole lot. I mean, initially it seemed like it did. Right. What's the what's what camera are you using to take your images now? Is it a DSLR? It's a DSLR, right? What scope? It's the 102. Uh, the scope's the 102, right? The ED one, right. ED 102. So, what resolution are you shooting at? Is it the full resolution, or are you doing it as lower resolution? I'm not sure what you mean by that, to be honest. What's the so? It's a, is it a 16 megapixel camera? Um, 18. 18, and yeah. you're shooting at full 18 megapixel images. I well, I'm shooting in the raw. Right, but I mean, as far as the resolution, as far as the pixels. I just I don't know, to be honest. Is it with like? You. Uh, let me uh, let me look at your thing here. Uh, so what I'm asking is, what is the size of this image in pixels that you're shooting? Uh, do you have a selection thing here? Like um, imaging mode. Wait, I'm going to click on this and see what this looks like. That's your, That's where you set up your imaging program. Access data. Okay, let's look at that. That'll tell us what the resolution is. Do you have to uh, maybe? Oh, shoot? there's no image. There's no image of either. I can take a snap. I need to take, I need to take a snapshot. Go ahead. Okay. Is that that thing you and Myron use? I can't remember the name of it. It's card to seal. That's right. I'm gonna close this down then. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I can I can use this too. This is DSO browser. Right. And so that's the that's the object I'm trying to hit right there. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. What is that tool? What is that with the? Um... I wish that was my image. <laughs> this is just DSO browser. It's a it's another planning. Uh... I've never seen that before. Yeah, that's it is. Cool. Huh. I use this a lot to plan my sessions. That's pretty cool. Yeah. You said it's good not to select a star that's too bright, right? Yes. Yeah, uh, it'll, it'll, it may select the star on its own automatically. Yeah. yeah it a, did. Yeah, I do. I just go to tools and then auto select star. Mm-hmm. And now, and this, then now you can start guiding. Just hit that green. That target thing. Yeah. I thought it had to go through all those steps before it did this. No. We we already calibrated it. You, we force a calibration. So that's something you do It'll only do once, type of thing. Well, you want to do it when you. So you basically want to calibrate depending on which side of the meridian you're on. Yeah. If your target's on the east, then you want to do a calibration. If the last calibration you did was on the east and you're on the west, then you want to do a calibration. Um. It can flop, it can switch the calibration over to the other hemisphere, but it's better to just do another one. Sure. Uh, you may, you, can, you have the option of using the previous calibration when you just hit that button to start track, to start uh, guiding. Yeah. But it may be good, may not be good, depends, especially if you're going from night to night. It should be the same pretty much, because nothing's changed on your system. The camera's the same, the optics are the same, everything's the same. Right. So it should work right off, you know, off the bat. It's a good, quick thing if you want to get started quickly and you don't want to spend two or three minutes doing a calibration, then you can do that. Okay. But um, it, but it's better because the calibration changes based on the sky conditions too. Mm. It may not be quite um, 
quite as good. It just depends. Right. Um, yeah, you got a little bit of a moon going on, but not too bad. Yeah, so it looks like you're getting about one and a half arc seconds. That's that's pretty high. I'm kind of surprised. Does it work itself uh, out? I remember you had mentioned before that it sort of, you know, works itself it out, should, as it were. It should get, well... When you do the balance on the RA axis, did you balance it perfectly or did you bias it one way or the other? No, I balanced it perfectly. Okay, you should bias it. Basically what that means is once you balance it, you're going to shift the uh, the weight uh, out just a tiny bit to bias the so that it's, so that it's counterweight heavy. Yeah. So you're going to do that. Okay. And uh, and that will smooth it out a little bit. That'll get rid of some of this little bit of lash that looks that's going on. Um, one and a half, the total of one and a half arc seconds is pretty high for that mount. It seems like it should be around an arc second. It was better before when we did it. I don't understand. You think it was well, a star? Well, it just depends. It, again, it depends on a lot of things. This is the same target. It's pointing the same direction it was. Right. But the biggest thing is the fact that it's got um, that blobby star to guide on. Do you think maybe... It's not focused. It's not focused. you think we should select a better guide star? No, it's not that. It's just that it's... Um, the resolution is not high enough for the guide... With the guide scope you've got and the camera. If you were to... Uh, I wonder if we could do this. Let me stop it for a second. Okay. Uh, can I go to the setup? What would that let me set up? Do I have to connect it? No? See this little wrench thing? Yeah. I don't know why it's not coming up. It should let me set up the camera. There's a driver. Did you load the ASCOM driver for this, uh, for this camera? No, I remember I said yeah. I was having a yeah. hard time. It was those darn, I was having problems with those darn, darn com ports. Yeah. You know? It, is this number right here, Jerry? I mean, this this is good because it's narrow, right? Meaning it's not an oversaturated star, right? The SNR value, the signal to noise ratio down there, the green. See right there, right here. Yeah, yeah, right here. That's the number that we're talking about. Oh. That's not saturated. Is that a good the number? Peak also. Uh, the star profile peak looks like it's pretty dim. Um. See this half flux diameter pixels? Yeah. Four pixels. Right. That should be below two. Oh, geez. Or around two. And see what the arc, see how big that blob is? It's yeah. 15 arc seconds wide. That's, that's, a, that's the problem. So. It's just too, too low a resolution to be able to guide accurately. See how fat the blob is here? Yeah. So you need to, is there a focus adjustment on that on that optic, on that finder scope? Yes. How do you do it? Uh, just. They twist the object, is it the main objective just turns, is it screwed on? No, it's a, it's a focuser in the back. Oh, it's got a focuser, an actual focuser on it. Yeah. Okay, see if you can bring, see if you can tweak it just a tiny bit to bring that number down. Okay. Oh, it went up. Uh oh, I don't know what happened. He adjusted it apparently and it went way out of focus. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is. It's coming back. So this. Looks like it. Oh, there it is. It's coming back. This thing. So try to get. So try to tweak that to get the number to go down. So this number. I want to tweak it till this number goes down. Yeah. It's, it's going up right now. It's going in the wrong direction, huh?
that's going to move around when you touch it anyway. So you have to tweak it and then let go of it and see where it settles. Looks like he went the wrong way. Oh, oh, it's coming back now. It goes, it's getting better. When you, every time you touch it, it's gonna. Oh, that's better. Down to three. A little more? Yeah, see if you can get it to come down below three. Oh, that's getting better. Oh. Why are they jumping around so much? Is it better? Me, than, uh, it's better than it was, right? Yeah, let me do something here. I don't know. Did the did the clouds come out or something? No. Actually it's very beautiful right now. Minus the little See bit if of... you can tweak it to the number comes down a little bit more. Okay. Oh, that's way up. <laughs> uh, it's sensitive. Yeah. There we go. A little better. Not much. Okay, I'll just keep. See if you can. I don't know why it won't come down to that more than that. I think it's because well. Again, the resolution on this camera is very. Let's see something. Big. Okay, let me see. Look at that. Let me pick on this star. Here we go. It's a little better. I mean, it's a little clearer. Yeah, let's, uh, let me look at this one. Can't get it to lock on. Ooh, that was a good number. Yeah, but it's not, it's not pointed at anything. The square's not on the star right now. I know, but in terms of the focus, is it looks a little better. No, right? it's not. No, it's not on the star right now. Oh. That's why it's... Okay. I gotta get it on a star before I can calculate the focus. Why is it not? Won't let me pick that other one. Let's see what it does now. It's back where it was. So I'm gonna try doing uh, tweaking it a little more. See if you can tweak it a little bit more. It's a tiny bit. Can't get any better than that. That's really. That's nuts. That's a big blob. It wasn't that bad before. No, this is about what it was. I don't know why you can't get it to focus any. Maybe it's just the quality of that camera or that optic. That's probably what it is. What kind of guide scope is that? Where did you? Did you buy that as a, a guide system, or did, is that a separate scope that you bought? Yeah, it's a stel it's a Stellar View, fi uh, fifty. Ste fifty millimeter. Yeah. Well, that's not very good. <laughs> All right, hold on, let me try. I'm spoiled. Oh, I'm spoiled I know you with are. the stuff I have. That's that's a blob. I mean, think about it. Um. 15 arc seconds, 20 arc seconds wide. That's uh, really. Do you think maybe we could use sharp cap to, to focus this thing better? Maybe that might work. Yeah, All might right. be easier. Do you want me to turn it on? Yeah, let's uh, disconnect this. Okay. Stop right. it. What is it doing? Not responding. Uh oh, I, I didn't step on anything, I know that. <laughs> I'm doing anything. I can't, uh... You want me to disconnect all? My, my team viewer 
session must have died or something because I can't do anything on the screen. You, you'll have, I don't okay. see anything going on. All right, let me give you close the... It, close that program and let me see if it goes away. You want me to close the team viewer? No, no. The, the, you mean the guy, the, the PhD? PhD2 guiding. And did you get it disconnected? I just did, yeah. Okay, so I don't, my team view, I'm going to have to restart my session, I think is what it is. It's the same password. Um, yeah, I don't remember what it is. Okay. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you ready? It, it's trying to connect right now. Hold uh, on. Okay, what is it? It is 733. 733. M as in Michael. Mm -hmm. J is in Jacob, P is in Paul. There you go. Alright, I'm back. Alright. So there's Sharp, uh, sharp Cap so, right here. Yeah, go ahead and start Sharp Cap and we'll see if we can focus this thing a little better. Okay. I think that's that's part of the issue. You know how to operate this thing probably better than I do. I've done some. So we'll see what I can do here. There it is. There we got something. Yeah, I don't see it yet. It's 50 milliseconds for me, yeah. Uh... Why is that not letting me select the. Exposure. There it goes. Is that the gain? Oh, this thing is just slow. Why is it? It's not responding to me very mm. fast. Do you want me to try? I'm trying to get it to like two seconds. That's what I'm trying to do. So. Oh, there's a second. There we go. That's fine. You want me to so, try to hone those stars in a little? Yeah. Chris sharpen it up. I don't know if we can zoom in on this. Just, yeah, just try to see this down here. This blob. That may be just the optics. See, yeah, it's got that glow around it. It's mm -hmm. almost like it's. Here, let me. It's looking a little better. Is there is there stuff on the objective? Has it got dew on it or anything? No. Mm -hmm. A little better. Excuse me. Oh. Bless you. Thank you. Does that look a little See, better? See, it's got that glow around. It's got this sharp center thing, but then it's got the glow around it. I don't know what that is. Might be my. Wonder if it's my light. I don't know. Aim away here. No, I think. Kind of reminds me of when you get frost on the. Uh, my dew heater is okay. working. I got my dew heater on. Yeah, you shouldn't have much dew out there. Yeah. Um, hmm. That's a little blobby. There we go. Let's That's look it. at this one at the top left. See if you can get that one really tight, really small. Yeah, how small you can get it before it starts to get big again when you move the focuser. So. I don't think it's getting any. That's about the best you can get, isn't it? I don't know. I'm still tweaking. That's better than it was. Yeah, it doesn't have that glow around it like it did. It didn't see, have that little, yeah. See if you can touch it up just a tiny bit more. I just barely touched it that time. That doesn't look too bad. That looks pretty. See, when you start getting it focused, you start to see these little dimmer stars come out. Right. See all, see this one here? This one that wasn't there before. You see these here? Yeah. You didn't see those before, so just see if you can just tweak it just a tiny bit more. Yes. See if we can get it a little bit better. Mm. See, that might looks, be. Like it looks like that worked. That's a little better. I'd leave it there. You think that's good? Yeah, that's probably good. All right, I'm going to lock it down. Now, when you lock it, it may move it, too. How's that? 
Uh, that's pretty good. Let's leave it there for now. Let's go back and see what it looks like on the other one. Okay. I think that's probably the best you're going to get out, out of this. Yeah, so I was going, I should have kept going the one way. Didn't even realize yeah. it. I'm going to attempt to sit down and not fall. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you want me to shut down uh, yeah, sharp cap? Yeah, we can close this. Okay. Um, let's just close it. Okay. Let's go back to PhD. Now let's, uh, yeah, let's go to PhD, okay. reconnect, and then we'll look at it and see what the guide stars look like now. Okay. I mean, definitely they looked a little sharper, you know. Can you see what's going on still, Jerry? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, All I right. can see. It's just got a lag. I think it's because your computer is just slow. Yeah. Okay, that looks a little sharper. They look better, yeah. So, let me... Uh... Damn, now I'm starting to freeze my you-know-what off here. I'm trying to see. Oh, it's getting cold. <laughs> Why is it not let me pick that one? Well, let's see what the guiding looks like on here. It's still the same. That's about the best you can get, I guess. Uh. I think the, uh, the guiding is a little better right now. We'll let it run for a minute or two and see what it comes out to be. So does it to have a tendency to sort of resolve itself, you know, kind of correct as things go along? You mean get you mean get better? Right. No. I mean, it's like what you see now is what you get. What you see, yeah, after about two or three minutes, what you see is basically what you get until you change something. Okay. Uh, let me, I can adjust something real quick. <laughs> Um, minimum motion. I'm gonna get this down just a little bit more. I'm gonna I'm gonna change this up some to fifteen. And let's see what this does. <laughs> Oh, let's see what we got here. Uh, what is that? Maybe, it, maybe it's a little better. I don't know. I mean, certainly when I look to the left there, those stars look a little sharper. Yeah, but there's going to be a limit to what you can tune out. That didn't really make much of a difference. It didn't look like. Do you think I, I need a, a guide scope that has a little bit longer focal length on it? Yeah, I think I think that would help. But okay. let me let me try something else here. Okay. So you going the other way now? Yeah, I'm just gonna see what impact this has going from a small value to a large value. See if it gets worse. Mm. Or not. I thought it was got worse, but maybe it didn't, so... Something stopped. Oh, you shut it down. Oh, I see. Yeah, it stopped it. I'm yeah. like, oh, no, not again. <laughs> okay, see how I it's... See. see, that's not going to really make a difference. It's going to jump further and faster. Because the aggression, it may when you say, make it worse. What do you it's mean? It's really not making it happen. What is the aggression? What is that? Right ascension aggression, I know. That's the gain. That's That tells you how much it pulses, depending on how far off it is from the center. So okay. it's trying to keep the center of the star in, in the crosshair, right? Right. So when it moves off, it says, okay, you need to pulse it X amount to get it to go back. But if... if if it's not moving fast enough, and you you can raise the aggression and make it really move farther, so then what happens is it starts to overshoot and oscillate. It goes way past where it needs to go because you're pulsing it too hard. Okay. okay. What I mean by pulsing it too hard is that it's either the pulse time is too long, or the magnitude is too great, and it's a combination of the pulse time and the magnitude that tells it how far to move, basically. Okay. Uh, and so what we're seeing here is it's oscillating. 
but the magnitude is still about the same. It's 1.3 arc seconds. So I think it's it's the resolution of the image and how good the optics are is what your limit is right now. Let's see what we got. Two minutes subs. That's still a preview. Um, uh, preview.
turn me on back. Oh, okay. I've just been kind of playing around with some of the settings here. Uh, I went into PHD2 and I adjusted that R8 aggression down to 50 and it seemed to help the graph. Do you see what's going on? Yeah, it's a little bit less than this. 1.05. It was all over. It was 1.3 or something before. Yeah, right. It was all over the place. Now it seemed to smooth out. Do you think I should go down a little more? Um. Uh, I mean, it's a lot better than it was, I got to tell you. Yeah, but it's still, the total is still about one and a half arc seconds. Yeah. Um. I mean, but in terms of what you're seeing now, it's. It shouldn't, uh. Well. <clears throat> Yeah, we're going to have to play around with that some more. I think one thing we can do next time, I'm going to have to go off here in a minute, okay. is we can set up the uh, ZWO camera, the guide camera on your main scope, and not just and then use that optic to do the guiding, and then we'll tune it and see how fine, we'll see how much of this is because your mount performance or as opposed to the optic, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if we put the if we try to guide with your 102 and just record the data, that'll give us a good indication of what your mount is capable of. Oh. And so some of this may be you just may be mount limited. It may have nothing to do with the optic and the and the uh, scale. We just have to find out by use by we can use your your main scope for that and figure that out next time. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, you don't think by adjusting this down a little bit more it'll help things? No, you can try it. So you can, you, you can adjust it all over the place and see what it does, but I don't I don't think you're going to get any... The total is still going to be about the same. Yeah. I don't think you're going to see much difference. That's 1.5, about 1.5 arc seconds, right? Did you, uh, yeah, about 1.5. It should be below 1. I would expect for that mount, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, it's hard to say. Growing, growing. It seemed like when you did a calibration, there was a lot of, a lot of lash in that mount. For some reason, that could be part of it. Do you think I should adjust? There's an anti backlash option. Do you think I should adjust that up in the mount? On, on the uh, on the mount on the controller. Idiot. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how that would work. I mean, that, you'd have to read about that and see what it does exactly, but you, that probably would help, maybe. I don't know. Just, I don't know what it does, would do. Yeah. It's supposed to supposedly compensate for the backlash. One guy I talked to at High Point, you know, says it should be adjusted. The other guy says it should be at zero. He wouldn't touch it, you know. So it's like they were <laughs> That's the thing. It's like, it's like black magic. That stuff manufacturers put this stuff in there these features but they don't really work really well so so what it ends up happening is people try all these different things and think they got it working better or not you know or, or not and so you get all these different different advice on what to do with it yeah it's, it's because it's not effective I don't know it's like there's two two schools of thought on it you know I mean now the graph's going absolutely haywire. I mean, I don't, I don't get this part at all. Yeah, that spike there. I saw this. You, you, with lower end mounts, you'll see spikes like that, where it's little burrs on the uh, on the gears. Yeah. Where it kind of drags for a second, and then it releases, and that's what it does. Yeah. So, and this is what I hated about auto guiding. When I was first started, like you are. Yeah. Because you'll go along and you'll have these pictures, and you'll have these little nicks, these little spikes in the in the stars, and that's see, that, that spike in the graph is going to be a spike in the the picture in the yeah. star. Yeah, you'll see it, and there's nothing you can do about it because it's the quality of your gear is what it comes down to. Well, uh, it's what I can afford right now. <laughs> well, that's most people live. I mean. You, You'll get by. You'll do great pictures with it. You just have to throw some pictures away that that aren't up to speed. That's all. Right. Yeah, that's exactly what I do. So the goal is to get, you know, and the other thing I would do with your camera with the backyard EOS is figure out how to 
to uh, not use a full resolution on the camera. I would bend it, I would take it down to the next level, down to around eight. If it, if you could do eight megapixels or something like that, I would se- I would select that on the camera. Okay. May have to just select it on the camera itself. Right. Uh, that's the other thing I would do. To, and there's a couple of reasons. One is is the quality is not going to improve by taking a full size image. It apps and it makes it worse. It's harder to process. There are much bigger files. They use up a ton of disk space. It's just not worth it. Yeah. Uh, at this level, so that's that, that's the biggest advice I would give you about your camera. Okay. All right, I'll work on that. I'll go a step down, maybe. Yeah. Okay. And I'd like to. Once you do that, take a look. I'd like I'd, I'd take a look at some of your images to see what where how the sampling is, and you still may be oversampled with the next step down. Mm-hmm. The the goal is to be critically sampled. What that means is you're only given a high enough resolution to get all the image, all the data the sky will give you, and nothing more. You don't need to do any more than that because then you're oversampled. Okay. Uh, you don't gain anything by doing that. So the mm-hmm. the goal the goal is to be critically sampled um, which basically there's a way to measure the image uh, stars on the image and determine what that scale would be so I could take one of your images and measure it and figure out what the the megapixels should be based on what your full size image gave me yeah okay so in terms of the length of the image, what would you say, like nine, maybe ninety seconds, one hundred twenty max, something like that? No, you could go, you can go longer. It's just the problem with a DSLR is you start to build up heat and right. noise. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's not, not a cooled camera, so right. you are kind of limited in a way. But you can try. I would try three minutes and see what you get, see how noisy it is. So what I did, uh, what I did here, Jerry, is I lowered the uh, ISO down to eight hundred. See, and I did a. This is a ninety-second sub right here. Okay. Uh, see if it, yeah. See this one here. There it is. See it? Yeah, it looks good. So the noise then, in the background should be lower than what you saw in the previous frame. That's that. Looks pretty good though. That's this one here is a hundred is a hundred twenty seconds. Yeah. Right here. And then this one oh. is 90 seconds. Yeah. At, at, and they're both 800. Okay. Um, so. Do it. What? Did you have one for the 1600 or not? Um, I think this one here is the 1600 at like 60 seconds. See? Yeah, it's more noisy. It's got more See how noisy. noisy? Right. That's, so you're trying to get rid. Of, so you're trying to minimize the noise. Right. That's the goal. Right. So since you can't cool the camera to minimize it, basically the only way you have to do it is to is to lower the ISO. I would go to 400 and see what it looks like. Okay. At, and how long do you think? I would stick with the two minute. Two minutes. Okay. So I got it right there. Okay. Let me do a preview on that. Okay, I'm doing one at 120, 400, ISO 400. I've been starting to do dark frames too, or darks as well. I yeah, you need to do darks because the noise. It helps. So much thermal noise it builds up in the uh, digital SLR. That'd right. probably be the most useful frame that you could take as a dark frame. Yeah, I've been doing that. I just started doing it, and I then I run it through Deep Sky Stacker, and I've been getting pretty good images. You know. Yeah, it should it should knock the noise pretty down quite a bit, but shooting at 400 ISO will help a lot too. Okay, so right now it's taking a 120 second sub at ISO 400. And uh, do you see the stars? Are you still on, Jerry? Can you still see what's going on? Yeah, I'm on. What do you think of the stars? I I mean, do you see well, the good. stars? Well, good. So what I'm looking at here, this is what's interesting to me that that. The focus is really good because you can split you split that little double there. Yeah. How much is it zoomed right now? When you what do you mean zoomed? It's, it's 100 oh, percent right now. Right, that's 100 percent. 
Should be able to go up higher too, right? Yeah, you can go. Yeah, you go. Oh, I see. Yeah. So this is what I'm interested in here. That looks pretty good. See how tight these stars are? Right. Is that? That's not what. That's different than what you see on the. Because uh, you got a pretty good focus. Um, Next to that Batnoff mask, it really helps. Yeah. That's a beautiful uh, DSO, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I was hoping to get that horse head in there too. Maybe after I take enough data. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is gonna. We'll see what this looks like here. Yeah. Okay, it's just ready though. It's gonna be not gonna be quite as bright. See how it's a little darker, but the histogram you need to stretch it that looks much cleaner see how much cleaner that is right um take a few of those excuse me uh Bless. let me look at something real quick here i'm gonna let's see if i can stretch one minute there we go I did something. so what you notice is that the nebula is not near as bright at ISO 400. Uh, that's because you've got the gain lower, so it's not as sensitive. But it's a much cleaner image, which means you'll be able to stack more of them without building up the noise. Mm. And that's really what you want. Mm -hmm. uh, you want a higher you want a higher quality image, even though it, it'll take longer or take more frames to do an image. Mm. Uh, It'll be much cleaner and you can stretch it harder than what it comes down to. Yeah. So, you might want to experiment between taking a bunch of frames at 400 and a bunch of frames at 800 and seeing how that works. Mm -hmm. Do you think I could go to th uh, 180 seconds? Probably not, huh? Probably too no, you can, no, you can guy, you can take as long as you want. This will... And with the ISO lower, the sky brightness won't overwhelm it. So you could go, you could go uh, a few minutes. Kind of curious. I think with no problem, you can try that and see what it looks like. <laughs> try to do another one here. That's still at four hundred. So yeah, I would leave it. At, I would leave it at four hundred, especially with the longer exposures. Mm -hmm. Um. You can afford to keep it down at 400. So when I look at this histogram, is this where should the histogram be? I mean, what's... well, see, this is a, this is kind of a, I'm not used to this kind of goofy uh, slider. It doesn't seem like it does a lot. Uh, it doesn't really do what I expect it to do. Because what you're doing when you do that is you're 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 compressing the range and it should brighten it up. But this I don't know. It just doesn't seem to act the way I would expect the histogram yeah. to work. When you're sliding this range, it should change it quite a bit, but it doesn't look like it's changing it at all. But when you make it when you boost the the amp the gain here like that. That sets a zero point. Um, oh, that's cool looking. Ooh, that's interesting. So what you're doing is I'm compressing the range here. I'm making the I'm making it. I'm amplifying basically a small range of pixels in the center there in the mid range, and making it look brighter. So let me zoom up on here. But see, look what happens. Yeah, it looks very. It's over processed, basically. That's... But it's bringing out the data. It's basically stretching the data really hard. I'm surprised this has got that little bit of a. The red is blobby. It looks. So, I don't know. That's kind of interesting. I don't know why the red's kind of stretched out there. Let me reset that. So now you can see that 
can barely see. Um, so this one should be a little brighter and be pretty clean like this one is. Yeah. This is what I did my wide field stuff in, 400, like for about 120 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's it. That looks All right, pretty. So the background's starting to show up a little bit. You can see there. And that the way you uh, brought that. Let me see. Uh, I'll go the wrong way. You can adjust it on the screen with the Instagram. But now you can see you got some really clean looking. See this little? See this? Yeah. This little tail that's on the star. Right. That's one of those spikes that I was talking about. Uh, That's what it looks like. Right. It's a pain in the butt. <laughs> oh, That's damn. another reason you reduce the size of these because once you reduce the, see that big blob of, blob of pixels there? Once yeah. that gets reduced down to a, like, like a six or eight pixel square instead of a 20 pixel square, then it becomes much tighter, and much better. It looks much cleaner. Mm -hmm. So that's the, so, if you can figure out how to change the uh, size of your image, <laughs> excuse me, Both. then you can, uh, I think the images would look even that much better. And shoot at 400 at 120 seconds. And then you can stack those, and I think you'd have some really nice images. Okay. I wonder what that graph looks like right now. Yeah, it's still the Himalayas. Yeah, it's it's uh, uh again, see how blobby that star is that you're tracking on? Yeah. The, the seeing might not be the best tonight either. That's right. the other thing. It may just be the seeing. Yeah, because there that's is causing a lot of it. If it's right. if the stars look like they're twinkling, then it's definitely not good. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, uh, because I mean we got a little bit of a moon thing going on, like I said. If they're twinkling, that's a, that means your sky conditions aren't that good. That's right, because what causes it? That's the scintillation. The twinkling is an indication of the seeing and how much the stars move around. Ah. Uh, so, so the less twinkling, the better. Yeah, the less twinkling, the better. Which means the best conditions during the is when you have very high thin clouds. The transparency is not as good. You know, the sky doesn't look as black. Yeah. But that's the best time to image. Really? Yeah. Interesting. It's hmm. a little counterintuitive. People think when the sky looks really clear and that it would make great pictures, but it doesn't. Not when you're zoomed up on them. Yeah. Because the stars move around. And, uh... Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, I would have told right. you, you know. Well, I think I'm going to have to head on. I'll, I'll get back with you again soon when you have the next session. Maybe you can uh, put the camera on the main scope and we can do some guiding and see what it looks like there. Okay. Very good. All right. All right. Sounds good, Jerry. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Yep. I'll talk to you later. All right. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye.